Welcome to the Ndoa video series. My name is uh, Carol Wanjao. I'm a pastor and I'm a marriage and family therapist. And tonight I'm really excited that you can be here with us. Uh, we've been doing a video series, you know, for the last month or so, and it has been an amazing experience. If you haven't watched any of the video series that I have been doing, you know, kind of go back, flip back and, and you know, just uh, have a watch. They have been exciting. We've been uh, just having very amazing uh, conversations on this video series. And uh, basically, uh, with this one, we are exploring how do couples overcome. Uh, the reality is that every couple goes through a journey, a marriage journey. And in that marriage journey, they experience or we experience joys as well as challenges. Let no one fool you. Everyone goes on a journey. And the ability for a couple to overcome is basically dependent on a couple's ability or a resilience or ability to bounce back. And so today I am super excited to be introducing to you an amazing couple. Believe you me, uh, you will be amazed at their story. And I want to introduce to you an amazing couple that is Pastor Milton and his wife, Vivian. And I want to begin by saying welcome. Welcome, Pastor Milton. Uh, welcome, Vivian. I'm so excited that you can be joining us tonight on this uh, Ndoa video series. And, and, you know, and so Karibu. Karibu ni sana. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you yeah. for having us, Pastor Carol. <laughs> yeah, so I want to start right off and to ask, uh, you know, Pastor Milton, who are you? There are people here who, you know, may not even, <laughs> who may not know who you are. And so who are you? You know, what is your family background and what, you know, influenced you the most growing up? Wow, um, I can see you want us to have a Kesha tonight, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, I'll try to be brief. Yes. Um, Pastor Middleton uh, is a seventh born in a family of eight. Um, we, uh, we were raised in the Eastlands area of Nairobi, so uh, you can say mini Chagunta. And um, uh, in the thing that actually those two things influenced me by is that uh, being seventh born where every year uh, there was a child who had been born ahead of me such that there was a time in primary school there was someone in class one who was me and there was someone till class seven eh? oh, wow. uh, it created a very competitive space a place where uh you know you are challenged even without being challenged eh? people scoring like a 36 the first person a 35 the second a 36 like the next one you know it just throws you off eh? You, because it's like nobody has to tell you you have to pass like this. Yeah. And it was it was very interesting because what that made us is um, actually all of us are go getters, all of us are self driven, all of us are uh, find their own space in whichever space you put any one of us in, someone will thrive. You know, wow. and coupled with uh, uh, the term mentality, you become uh, street smart. You become uh, someone who uh, you make decisions on the go. Eh? Yeah. So those things really, really influenced me wow. uh, uh, very much. Okay. Um, and then I also played football uh, very early on. So uh, mobilizing, playing in teams, uh, people pulling their weight and having to play their part uh, became a very big thing for me. So uh, I think those were my big three uh, key influencers. Uh, as I grew up. And also dad was a very strict man. Um, he, he, he demanded from us uh, to do well. And uh, we, we, we did. <laughs> we did. did um, in his strictness, the things that he modeled uh, uh, and, and allowed us to get into those spaces where we vocalized our opinions, we said what was happening, and it was okay uh, to say your thoughts. Yeah. So okay. I think in a nutshell, uh, yeah. That's like a glimpse of, of my background. Oh, that's, a, that's an amazing glimpse. It seems like you were a staircase <laughs> and everybody just had to make it to the top. <laughs> you, oh, yes, all, you, you, you really just had to make it. And, and no doubt that that has um, continued to impact you and to influence you even in your marriage. Uh, so uh, how about for you, Vivian, you know, how about you, you know, what is your family background and, and what are some of the things that influenced you, you know, the most growing up? Um, I grew up in, um, I, might, I might be what people call a Barbie, 
I grew up in uh, Upper Hill and Kilimani. Um, <laughs> so we have, <laughs> we, we have we uh, have uh, Pastor Milton who called himself Mtuamta, marrying uh, Vivian who calls herself a Barbie. Wow. Okay. Let's let's go on. I understand, I understand Barbie doesn't mean a very good thing. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but I grew up in Upper Hill and Kilimani area. I'm the firstborn of five siblings. I have one brother, four sisters, no, three sisters. We are four girls, one boy. Um, my parents were both, uh, should I call them working parents? Yeah. What I recall about my childhood was playing a lot, even when I should have been reading, like, uh, I recall playing until I was even in standard eight. Um, I should have been focusing on studies, but yet I was playing. But yet, because that happened because I had younger playmate, playmates. Um, what else do I remember? We, we got along well with each other. We, okay. Even today, we still get along well with each other. We are, we are friends. We are siblings as well as friends. Okay. And uh, my, my mom was the disciplinarian. I don't recall being uh, beaten by my dad. Yeah. Although my brother did get uh, quite, quite a bit. <laughs> yes, from him. Okay. However, I don't recall ever being beaten by my dad, but my mom did the disciplining. Yeah. She did a lot of pinching and um, she pinched the thighs and also uh, used a stick. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you were brought up in a very disciplined manner, which I'm sure, you know, has um, impacted you and continued to influence you. And it's so amazing that uh, for the two of you, your, your, I think what is common or what I hear you having in common is just that very disciplined uh, kind of uh, upbringing for, for, you know, for, for you, Vivian, and also for you, Pastor Milton. So, uh, so, so is that something that attracted you to each other? You know, how did you meet and what attracted you to each other? Pastor Milton, what did you see in Vivian? Um, How did you meet? That's a good question. And every person has their version. Eh? Okay. So this is my version. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just finishing my internship at the Nairobi Chapel. Uh, Pastor Govio Dera sends me off to Mombasa for a resource mobilization and fundraising workshop. And um, there on the first day, uh, some six or so ladies come in late. And uh, one of them looks very different. The others are dolled up. You know, they have those coming to America slits as they are walking. <laughs> but this other one eh, looks yeah. so different, so simple in the way she is. The way she walks is very graceful. You know, yeah. as in, it's like someone who's self-assured. Eh? In fact, she had plated some lines of sorts. And I was like, oh, yeah, I think I've seen my wife. Oh, uh, wow. That, that was really funny. Because at the next break, uh, I went to my room, I prayed, I thanked God for seeing my wife, and I told him, I'm not going to pursue her, you bring her to me. Wow. By the way, uh, that was Monday. On Thursday, she came in again late that morning. Uh, I used to sit at the back. She comes, sits next to me, asks me, what have I missed? And I'm like, you've missed the keynote conversation that puts the whole workshop together. And she's like, you owe me. Then she goes to the front. That's wow. how we met. Talking. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, how fascinating. You were sent on a work mission and you found yourself a wife. So anyway, let's hear Vivian's uh, version of the story. What did you think? Or what attracted you? you? How did you meet? What is your version? How did you meet and what attracted you to, to your husband? It's, uh, it's pretty much the same in the sense that uh, when, when I also went attended this workshop from my workplace, but what surprised me is that a pastor was present. His yeah. name tag read pastor, and I was wondering what a pastor was doing at that workshop because it was organized by the civil society organizations. And typically a pastor wouldn't, a church uh, going person, in the sense um, a church leader may not have been present at that kind of workshop so that caught my attention yeah. and uh, but i recall spotting him sitting at the back he liked sitting at the back and i had told myself i would i should be careful about him 
Oh. However, I did get to sit next to him, but quickly moved to move moved away and sat at the front. Okay. Uh, but we still got talking. We engaged in conversation later that day. And what was interesting was that we kept meeting at different labs. Uh, we chose similar topics and we kept meeting. At some point, he extended kind of, I mean, he was kind enough to pass me water. And I was wondering, why is this guy being so nice to me? Oh, wow. um, and uh, it just moved on from there. And I exchanged contacts with him. I remember being very hesitant about it, but he didn't waste time. Oh. In fact, he called me every day since then. Oh, wow. And it's funny. Funny. keeping communications lines open. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pastor Milton, you had seen this. This was your goal. Uh, you, you, you had seen your wife and you are on acquisition mode. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. You want to say something? You see, it's like this. Eh? Um, uh, I think for me, when having a conversation with her and just realizing uh, the nature of person that she was, and then the confidence that I got from two or three people who knew her when I told them uh, this person that I met at the coast. Actually, there was someone uh, whom I honored so much who told me, Yani, there, my, my friend, if you lose this one, uh, <laughs> and don't even talk to me again. Yeah, it was that kind of a space. So three months, four months later, I had actually asked her to marry me. Oh, wow. You, you wasted no time. That's how we roll, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now, you know, you've been married. Uh, you know, in an earlier conversation, you told me that you've been married, you know, for some 12 years. Uh, yeah. And um, as we said, you know, in every marriage, it starts off that way with you know a lot of excitement, uh, a lot of attraction, you know, a lot of chemistry, and you know, and we get married, and then after a while, we realize, my goodness, you know, things are not as rosy as we may have, you know, expected them to be. So we can start uh, with Vivian. You know, what are some of the, what are you know, what are some of the challenges that you've experienced uh, in, in your marriage? Um, I would point out three of them, three major ones. Um, <laughs> I'm okay. I, I, I would admit, uh, point out three major ones. Um, one would be experiencing unemployment. I have had periods of being unemployed. Uh, and then the, the other challenge would be finding We've conceived and had miscarriages, but we still don't have children. And then the third one would be experiencing challenges with mental health. Oh, with mental health. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. And and um, so so as a family, wow, those are those are quite a number of um, experiences. You know, they are. You know, we always talk about life happening. So in these three areas, those are three key areas. You know. Uh, of challenge and and so uh, for for so with the mental health um, maybe you can say how that has been how has that been or what what has that been like it's been a journey because first of all it was very difficult for me to accept having done I did psychology in school so it became surprising to me that what I read about in school was happening to me I'm like why why is this happening to me? How can things that I read in a textbook be happening to me? So first, it was a process of, uh, it was actually a journey of coming, I've come to a place of acceptance. However, it was a journey of dealing with questions, wondering what this was about, um, just not understanding, trying to understand. And then I realized I don't have to understand. Yeah. I just need to accept what the situation is. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, 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 for how long have you had the mental uh, health issues? Um, wow. It started when I was in college. Um, um, wow. I would need to do a calculation. Okay. <laughs> It's about, it could be almost 20 years. 20 years. Okay. Yes. All right. 20 years. Okay. And, and no doubt for you, it has been a journey. Yes, it has. 
Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, so, so uh -huh. what I must say is uh -huh. that um, the I have had, in as much as it's been a long journey, I have had uh, four. Should I say four? Four episodes. Uh -huh. um, but the worst, the most recent, and the worst of them was in 2014, and uh, that took me a while to recover. Um, yeah, but but now I can say I'm in, I'm in a good place. You're in okay. You're in a good place. But I'm so sure. You know, when you started off, it must have been very puzzling. I think you 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 mentioned a little bit of that. You know, you're reading things in the textbook and then discovering that you know there are some of the things that you're experiencing. So you you're saying it it started off as a very puzzling kind of um, experience. Yes. Maybe yes. you can share. Yeah. So, I mean, when you discovered it, just would you, maybe you could tell us just some of the emotions that went through your mind, you know, your, my, my goodness, you know, could this really be happening to me? I, I'm, I'm not sure that I can remember everything, but I know that I had, I'm the kind of person that questions a lot. So yeah. trying to understand everything. Why is this happening? Is this spiritual? Is this uh, because I remember when it happened, there were students around me and they even prayed for me yeah. for spirits to come out of me. Mm. But as they were doing it, I could, I, I, it's like I was also conscious of what they were doing. Um, however, so I had those questions is this spiritual? Is this not? Is this medical? Is this not? Yeah. Uh, is this genetic? Is this hereditary? What is yeah. it? Just yeah. all kinds of questions. Just trying to understand what's really happening. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for that, Vivian. Uh, so, for Pastor Milton, you know, you 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 get married. Why you? Uh, so, what 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 has the journey been like for you? Um. Yeah. Even for me, it's really been uh, uh, a journey. Um, I think uh, at first for me, uh, I, I have a background in uh, pre-hospital uh, medical uh, practice. Before I became a pastor, that's who I was. <laughs> okay. So um, I think after getting married, uh, I started having questions in my mind because um, I could observe a thing or two and wonder about uh, uh, her, her status and how uh, it played out. Then uh, one time unexpectedly uh, at a meeting, we, we had had a, a bad space. Um, uh, we had just lost my grandmother. Uh, the next day or two, uh, we had had a miscarriage then uh like two or three months later my dad passed on so uh there was this situation where uh, we'd gone out for for something with 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 vivian um and uh, uh she'd also just had uh a mis yeah it was just after the miscarriage so um in in this space that we'd gone together i was doing a training uh, taking some people through some strategic uh, planning thing, uh, she started acting very differently. And it was scary. And I could tell, uh, now this is bigger than anything I'd suspected before. Uh, it really uh, shocked me. Uh, but uh, again, because of probably my practice, it was possible to be uh, uh, at ease uh, a lot. Uh, to manage just the situation and uh, sought to assure her that I would stand with her. Uh, that is when she told me it's something that had happened before. She told me what it was. And um, uh, I just told her, I don't even know what this would mean, but we'll walk through this. That had been yeah. my first reaction. After we'd gotten medical help, um, uh, that's when probably challenges started coming to my mind. You know, uh, uh, I didn't know about this. Uh, it's come to me right now. Uh, how do I handle this? You know, first there was that one, hey God, uh, 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 
how 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 did we end up here? Um, and it was it was it was not so good at first for me, mm -hmm. but then uh, I I bumped into something that for me radically uh, changed me. It was a book, mm -hmm. and um, this book, you know, the way you go to browse uh, yeah. and you start looking at the back page, what they say about the book and the author. Uh, this book had only one question at the top. What if God gave you marriage, not necessarily to make you happy, but to make you holy, to yeah. perfect you? What will change as to how you treat your spouse? Wow. It was annoying. I put the book back. I yeah. tried to browse because uh, I was waiting for some people uh, and uh, I couldn't keep my mind off the question. So I went back, picked the book, read the paragraph. I thought this guy is even more annoying than he was at first. I yeah. put the book back, trying to browse even further. Uh, you come back, uh, I look at the table of contents and the first question is, are you a God-centered spouse or a spouse-centered spouse? I ask myself, wow. this guy is not married to my wife. He doesn't know the <laughs> challenges of my, my, my life. Uh, I, I read through the first chapter because the chapters were very short, like one page uh, back and, and front was a chapter. And the guy just hit me. I actually bought the book. Yeah. It changed me completely. Because you see, when Vivian had started taking uh, medicine, it affected her skin, it affected how she looked, uh, it affected her smell, uh, because uh, the, the medicine was creating eczema all over her body. Oh, wow. um, it was quite challenging. In the morning, you get into a mat with nice smelling ladies with expensive perfume. You know, uh, yeah, as in, it was, it, was, it was quite an experience. You're laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That, that, that was, and, and, um, and how, how did your family respond, um, Pastor Milton, to, because what I hear you say is that, you know, at the time that you got married, you were not aware. Yeah, this came to, to you as a surprise. Um, so first of all, how did you feel about that? You know, you, you are not aware, and this has come to you as a surprise. Um, I think at first uh, I'd felt angry because uh, it hadn't been disclosed. Um, and uh, I think at first it was those ones of uh, uh, this is not right, shouldn't happen like this. I should have gotten into it informed. But uh, uh, I think, again, uh, for me, scripture really helps me. Because uh, even when uh, uh, people started telling me, you know, in your community, uh, this, this is not acceptable, you should get another woman, you should marry someone else. In your community, it's considered like uh, you, 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 you do not have a wife, you do not have a person there. They cannot give a testimony if something happens. They cannot be called as a witness. I think God led me to an interesting story in the Bible where... Joshua uh, is approached by Gibeonites and they tell him, we've come from far, man. Uh, we, we, we need you to make a pact with us, make a treaty with us, a uh, covenant to protect us. And Joshua agrees. And then a few days later, he realized these are just guys from here. You know, uh, they were being now attacked by the Amalekites. They come to Gideon, I mean to Joshua, would you, would you give us help? And Joshua goes to God and tells God, hey, these guys are coming for help. They had not told me the truth. What should I do? God tells Joshua, you go keep your word. You yeah. go keep your word. And uh, I'll give you the Amalekites into your hands. Yeah. And for me, that again was the second game changer. Because I had made vows to Vivian and, uh, and to God. I'd made a commitment, a covenant to her that uh, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, that I, I'll be there till death do us part. And uh, 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 God doesn't want us to make vows that we are not going to keep. Okay. I'd been exposed at the Nairobi Chapel in something that uh, we walked through Psalm 15, 
with uh, now Bishop Oscar, Pastor Moravi, and uh, Pastor Jason on uh, uh, making a code of conduct for life. And in that Psalm 15, we were being tasked to be people who keep our word at our very own heart. And uh, uh, that's the thing. Uh, and, and I realized, you see, the words that I said to Vivian were not words, were to make her secure, were to make her feel that I'm with her for the long haul, whatever comes our way. It was a covenant that I had made with her. So it just struck me that in a covenant relationship, uh, in, a, in, a, in a covenant uh, uh, space, um, it is me, my word, uh, for her safety, for her yeah. security, for her confidence. And I thought this is how I could help her. And mm -hmm. then just noticing that uh, 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 it wasn't Vivian's choice. It's not that she even decided I'll take this thing up for myself. Um, I needed to stand with her and, okay. and stand with you, Vivian, I will. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, <clears throat> so for Vivian, you know, your, your husband was going through all, all these issues, you know, running through his mind as, as he has shared with us. Uh, what, was, what was going on through your mind? I'm sure you noticed the struggle or, you know, just, you know, I'm sure you noticed it. So what was going on through your mind? Um, actually, the interesting thing is that he was very supportive. <laughs> so the, the struggle was an internal, I would say an internal struggle. He didn't, he didn't, um, he didn't express it to me and tell me this is, this is what I'm thinking. He didn't, he didn't ever talk to me about what the struggle he was he was going through it was i would say it was more of an internal struggle and then i need to explain that um, the fact that i didn't tell him wasn't uh, it was not deliberate it was because i felt um it was behind him it was at the time when we met i hadn't had an episode at all in fact it was something that i had to be reminded about that uh, i've had an experience like this and I recall at some point when we were having conversations in our, in, our, in our courtship, him asking me if there's anything I need to tell him. And for a split moment, the, the memory of it came to my mind. However, I remember hesitating talking about it because I felt I, I do not understand it. If he asks me questions, I'm not able to explain to him what this is. Yeah. So I came back thinking that I would say it at a later date. And guess what? I forgot about it. Yeah. So when he showed up again, now we are in marriage. And of course, he ends up feeling like uh, I, it was deliberate. I didn't want to tell him. But looking back, I realized it's something I should have told him, even if I didn't understand it. Even if he asked me questions, I should still have told him about it. I just told him, I don't understand. Yeah. I, I honestly don't understand. So I would encourage someone in a similar situation to just speak it out because it's, the consequences are more dire when you're yeah. in marriage than, when, than before so that the person can make a decision um, based on full knowledge. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But I would say it wasn't deliberate. It wasn't, um, it, it's just that I didn't understand it. And so yeah. I held back because I didn't understand it. Okay. And, and thank you so much, Vivian, for that perspective. Because what you're saying is that uh, in this journey, you yourself had been perplexed, you know, when it had first happened. And uh, at the time that you were getting married, you know, you had not had any episode uh, a recent episode and you, you actually didn't even know or even know what to explain or even how to to explain it and and, and that's very interesting um, because it seems like uh, there's a growing it, 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 with mental illness just like with anything else uh, people grow in being self-aware uh, even in knowing how to manage it but it, it's a gradual process so 
Uh, so thanks so much, uh, Vivian, for, for sharing that. So, and also thank you for, for just, you know, saying, um, you know, if somebody uh, finds themselves in this situation, there's a place to talk about it, even if you don't understand it. I feel that that is perfect. I mean, that is just a, a fantastic insight, uh, Vivian, that, that you provide. Uh, for Pastor Milton, you know, what, what advice would you have, you know, for someone, you know, who, found, who find themselves in the situation that you found yourself? You know, you are not aware, you know, so somebody right now is beginning to, you know, to see things that they had not seen before. Um, you know, what, what advice would you have? I think um, from the things I've learned in the journey is that, yeah, one, uh, it can maybe uh, shock someone, it can destabilize them. I agree. Uh, the big thing to pray for first is peace. Peace of heart and peace of mind. Because it's when you don't have peace that now you can do all those other things. Eh? You can become unfaithful because you're not at peace with yourself and with your marriage at home. You can be rough on the person because you don't have peace. Uh, you may want to be uh, vengeful uh, because of probably something that you think this should have been handled differently. So the first thing for me is uh, to, to ask the person, First, pray for God to give you peace. And when that peace comes upon you, the second thing is just to understand that uh, many people even write in cards, you know, two are better than one. When one is down, the other one lifts them up. Um, your work is not to kick them down. Your work is actually to raise them up. And their place, their situation uh, requires compassion, requires comfort, requires encouragement, requires you to uh, uh, reach out and, and be God's comfort for them. Why do I say God's comfort? I've come to learn that it is actually true. The way the Bible says that uh, God has given us all grace that we need for any situation we are in, it's, it's, it's for real. We, we sometimes are the ones who don't tap into that grace. We tap into our own power. And I've realized that uh, the reason why uh, God allowed us, he had already equipped me with every necessary uh, power, ability, graces to actually carry this marriage. He looked through the world and thought that would be uh, very good for my daughter and he will handle. So wherever you are, uh, if you find yourself there, you are not despised by God. You actually yeah. were more valued by God to be given that person because God knew you are able because he's already empowered you too. And lastly, uh, covenant. Keep your covenant. Covenant relationships are not like romantic relationships. They are higher. They, they, they are godly. They allow you to aspire uh, to, to love the way God loves. They allow you to lay down your life for the other person to find their peace, their joy, their comfort, their, their, their full self, the purposes of God in their life. And uh, it gives you a higher calling, which is richer, is, is as in, is, what, what can I say? It's, it's, it's just marvelous. It's fantastic to pursue that yeah. kind of space. If yeah. perspective tells you you received the short end of the stick, yeah. then you, will read, you will just live a, a beaten life. So yeah. those are the, the big things I would wow. actually say. And wow. if I was to do this again, Pastor Carol, I would still marry Vivian over yeah. and over again. Yeah. You know, like the way that musician said, if I could turn back the wheels of life, wow. then by telling you, you'll be mine. Yeah. Vivian, you'll still be mine. Wow. <laughs> yeah, she's also, wow. Also, yeah. Oh, I'm wow. The most intelligent woman on earth. Wow. No offense, Pastor Carol. <laughs> 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 wow thank you so much thank you so much uh, Milton Pastor Milton and Vivian and um, for somebody out there uh, you know who may find themselves in, in a rather difficult situation it could be that you know it could be mental health or it could be any other challenge because we you know as we said every marriage goes through challenges uh, what I would say is that your ability to bounce back uh, is 
uh, is based on your on, on just your understanding of the purpose for your marriage. I think for Pastor Milton, he puts it very well, where he says uh, that he, he senses that he's that God looked at all men on earth and dis, and realized that uh, Pastor Milton was the best person, uh, you know, to marry and to take care of Vivian. And uh, we always say there is no mistake, whatever situation you find yourself in, God is able to give you the grace uh, to overcome. He really is able to. And I thank you so much, Jumbas, for, uh, for modeling that for us so well. Now, I'm so sure that there are, you know, I'd like us to pray, but I'm so sure that there are people out there who would have, you know, further questions. Uh, you know, uh, regarding, you know, this story that we have had from, from Pastor Milton and Vivian, or who would even want prayer, and, uh, you know, you're not part of the Mabuno uh, community, if you desire that, we say by all means, you're welcome, you know, to write to us, uh, to ask us for prayers. Uh, all you have to do is uh, click on the, on the link below or join the WhatsApp number that is indicated there for you. Uh, say that you need prayer. Say even where you live so that a pastor near you will call you and we are more than happy to support you in your journey. Now, uh, just before we pray, I have been, you know, introduced to us a book uh, called The Negativity Fast. By the way, if you're interested in buying this book, it's an amazing book. It's, uh, it's available on a PDF uh, copy. And again, we'll put a link there so that you can purchase yourself, you know, a, a copy. Because I believe that the nuggets in this book are, are just so amazing. So today is, uh, the, the, it's day five in the book. And it says, uh, we fast from the thought God is rewarding them and not me. You know, someone out there might be saying, my goodness, look at the other marriages around me. Uh, I seem to be experiencing the most challenges. My marriage seems to be experiencing more challenges than anybody else uh, around. And you may be feeling uh, despair or you may be feeling inadequate, you know, just because of the weight that you might be carrying. Uh, and and a word that um, the author has is that your exam paper is different from your neighbors. I've never heard that before. But your exam paper, you know, there's no need of comparing yourself with your neighbor because I think the challenges that we go through are unique. And, um, and, and God is, is making us, is in a process of making us and molding us into, into becoming better people. So, you know, that whole thing of comparison, that whole thing of feeling despair, you know, that God is rewarding other people and not yourself, that is simply not, not a very helpful uh, thought to have because the reality, even as the Jumbas has, have shared, is that God is available uh, to every one of us to help us in whatever situation we find ourselves in. So I'm going to ask you, Pastor Milton, to just pray for somebody who might just be feeling we're in a very difficult situation. Um, when they look around, they feel, you know, God is rewarding others and not me. Uh, they may be feeling very low. I know for you, it has been a journey where you're, 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 you know, you're, you're kind of out of it. You know, you, uh, but, you know, would you pray for somebody who is at the beginning of their journey or somewhere in the middle uh, feeling very discouraged at this point? Wow. I wish we could pray both of us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're most welcome to do that. Yeah, Vivian will pray uh, for those who probably just need the confidence to, to step out with the kind of boldness and courage she's been working with that yeah. has been really admirable. Uh, for the comfort and the graces that are upon her life. Uh, yeah. She can pray for those ones. Uh, yeah, um, her, her lovely spirit um, mm -hmm. is, is, is good for this space. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Go ahead, Vivian. Uh, Father, we just come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you that you know the plans that you have for us. You have told us in your word that their plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us a hope and a future. We put our lives in, our, in your hands. We, we submit ourselves to you and yield ourselves to you, knowing that, Lord, you're the one that's in control of our lives. You are sovereign and you know all things. You're the one that made us. You're the one who knows the thoughts that you have towards us. And you say that they are countless, that they are more than the sand on the seashore. And Lord, we just um, uh, embrace this word and, and 
commit our lives to you, surrender, O oh God. We surrender our lives to you, knowing that, Lord, you are the one that knows what's perfect, what's good, what's pleasing to you, O oh God. And so I pray for others that may be in a situation where they're uh, in despair, where they're discouraged, where they, are, they have questions, where they have given up. I pray that your grace would abound toward them, that, Lord, you would cause hope to rise up in their hearts, and that, Lord, they would look to you as the giver of life, as the giver of hope, as the giver of comfort. Father, that you would strengthen them, O oh God, for the journey. That, Lord, the light that you, you put on their path will strengthen them for the next few steps, O oh God. That they would be strengthened in Jesus' name. I pray that, Lord, your love would surround them. That, Lord, they would experience your presence in a great and mighty way, O oh God. May they know that you love them. May they know that you care for them. May they know that you have everything in control. That, Lord, you're the one in charge. We thank you and bless you for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. We know that you are not a malicious God. That, Lord God, in you, Lord God, there is purity in all things that you do. Father, we thank you that uh, in life, we don't all start at the same space. The parable of the talents tell us there are people who you gave a talent, others were given two, others were given five. Yes, it can happen with resources, but it even happens in the different spaces of life, socially, uh, emotionally, uh, relationally. Uh, uh, some have children, some don't. As in, we all don't start at the same space. And it's not because, Lord God, you feel bad about others and good about uh, others. But it's because, Lord God, you have a purpose. You have a plan. You have something that you are doing in all of us, in our spiritual man. That, Lord God, whoever could be in those different spaces, whether it's issues about childlessness, people, Lord God, who may be at the space where it could be an economic uh, situation, that they've been down around the mountain, of financial want for too long. It could be those ones, Lord God, who they are going through a medical issue that may not even be like the one we've been able, Lord God, to uh, 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 um, navigate the waters off, but it could be a different thing. Father, we just want to pray that the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding would first guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. Father, we pray that you'll give them wisdom and discernment to know what to do and when and how to do it. Father, we pray that you will strengthen them, comfort, console, encourage them, and allow them, Lord God, the strength to move, oh God, to do that which is good and pleasing in your sight. Father, I pray that above all things, all these people, Lord God, will not become prisoners of their current circumstances, but they will seek to use the situations that, Lord God, they go through to become more like you, to be perfected, oh God, to be, Lord God, holy, to treat others, Lord God, in your attributes, in your nature, and in your likeness. That's something that would be worth aspiring for. So, Lord God, we thank you and we bless you that you would reach out to them knowing your hand is not too short to save. We thank you and we bless you for these things we commit to you in Jesus' great and mighty name. Amen. 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 So that's all that we have time for this evening. As you can see, we've, I think we've just had an amazing time. Uh, thank you so much, Jumbas, for being with us and for sharing your amazing story. Uh, so until next time, uh, next week, uh, we're rooting for you. And we just say, God bless you. Um, and, and, uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.